Hi, I'm Andrew McBean. I'm a partner here at Grant Thornton in Thailand for Business Process Solutions. I'm here to talk about robotic process automation. Today, all of us in business find ourselves between extremely powerful compressional forces, internal and external ones. COVID dramatically accelerated trends and outcomes that in many cases were already present before it struck. It's not unreasonable to suggest that things that would have taken place over 10 to 20 years actually took place over two to three years. Businesses that had fragile strategies before, well, many were not able to cope. Conversely, businesses with forward-looking strategies have done very well. Employees have suspected they were not really that happy doing repetitive and mundane tasks, which gave them only a small sense of personal value, decided in droves they were probably right after all. Customers who believe they should be getting more and faster value from their online experiences have equally found confirmation. And as if that were not enough, we also have high inflation, war in Europe, supply chain constraints, declining productivity, an aging workforce, increased compliance and regulatory demands, and new norms of working from home. These are not going away, they're here to stay. So, wow, not only is this an absolutely massive amount of change for businesses to cope with, but it's also happened in a very short space of time. Strategies that were in place before COVID must be revisited with these new seismic variables as part of that. Every one of these factors are present for us here in Thailand too. With issues like an aging society, we are even worse than most countries. In fact, recently, the Interior Ministry predicted that the population of Thailand would only be 46 million by the end of the century. A stunning drop in the working population and looking after an aged society. Interestingly, another trend that was around before COVID, but has also dramatically accelerated, is automation. In this context, I'm talking about robotic process automation software, software that can emulate human activities, especially those which are routine, rules-based, and with relatively high volumes. At the same time, doesn't make any mistakes, never goes on holiday, and is never sick. When I present automation to CEOs, I ask them a question. What percentage of your employees' time is spent on doing repetitive and non-value-added work? The answers are routinely very high, never less than 60%. This is work that we know employees don't enjoy doing and is adding very little value to our business. To my mind, automation is a bit like ibuprofen for the business. It can help reduce every one of the aches, pains and fevers we identified before. In fact, there's not even one that automation could not dramatically contribute to. And we're facing all of them at the same time. According to Everest Group Research, it allows us to reimagine processes, eliminate manual work, enhance stakeholder experience, and focus on business metrics, all crucial to a digital first business. We know that companies that deploy automation can get a return on their investments within a few months and companies that perform automation at scale across their enterprise outperform their peers. Just last week, Forrester's CEO Guide to Navigating a Turbulent 2023 named robotic process automation as a key technology for CEOs to improve customer experience and reduce costs. In Thailand, hundreds of companies have deployed some RPA software, but let me be controversial here. That means that tens or even hundreds of thousands haven't, and almost all of those that have are not scaling automation well. So why is that? There's actually a number of reasons, and very often it's a combination of these factors. Automation is not a toy. I've noticed a tendency, very often from IT departments, to consider automation as a, a nice to have or a toy, not a serious product like a shiny ERP system or a CRM. Let's be clear. Automation is a must-have, mission-critical enterprise application. It should be considered and budgeted just as seriously. Top-down support. Successful automation at scale implementations will likely involve change management. This must be driven and sponsored from the very top of the organization. The most successful automation at scale projects I have seen have very engaged CEOs. It's not an IT-led project. Automation is unusual, it can benefit every part of the business. They're also typically very easy to use, meaning that people in the business can develop their own bots. 
This is also powerful, as it means that development of bots is not constrained by difficult to get and expensive to keep development resources. IT also have a great deal on their hands, and automation may go to the end of the queue. An instinct of IT leaders, probably rightly, is to control risk. But this limits the potential of automation. So successful scaling companies will involve the business with IT as a critical stakeholder. Wrong proof of concept. Very often, when companies start their automation journey, they like to start with a process which is relatively easy. Of course, when you start, you're learning. So when that's finished, everybody stands back and says, well, that did not give us very much value, and it was not so easy. The best POC is one which gives a good return. Frankly, as automation is so proven now, many companies are not even doing POCs and just moving on with automation. Pipeline of automations. It's surprisingly hard for clients internally to determine a pipeline of high potential automations. These are typically low complexity and high value. This has nothing to do with technology, but a lot to do with resistance. Don't be afraid of having a third party come in to help you identify your pipeline of automations. This pipeline is fuel to the engine. They may also be done in botathons and citizen developer programs, but to run these successfully also takes a few things to be in place. Think big. The highest value will come from automation at scale across the enterprise. This requires a few things to be in place to make sure that scaling is as frictionless as possible. Successful companies who do this are using tens of thousands of robots. In fact, I know of one with 200,000. This will require investment in a center of excellence and an automation operating model, sort of like the company Bible for automation. Improve or automate. Often clients get stuck with knowing whether they should improve or automate a process. Again, it's often useful to speak with a third party that can do both rather than only one. However, often on a scale of improvement to automation, the initial focus tends more towards improvement. But as the client becomes more comfortable with automation, that scale starts to slide. Change management. The biggest challenge in automation is not the technology. It will come from internal resistance, fearful of change or losing their job. Thus, it's crucial to take the employees on the journey. When this is done, employees will find that they're engaged in much more fulfilling and rewarding work and will become part of the force for change. So automation is a critical tool in helping us with many of the business problems we're facing today. It can drive both tactical and strategic outcomes. It delivers efficiency, faster and more valuable customer experiences, more fulfilling employee engagement, and enhances compliance. If you need guidance with any of these, the Grant Thornton team and I are here to help. Thank you.